What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. And in this video, what I wanna discuss is the quality versus cost trade-off in accounting. And to do a quick little review, in the previous section, we went over the qualitative characteristics of financial information. What makes that financial information have good quality? And we went over these six characteristics. So relevance, faithful representation, the information has to be comparable, verifiable, timely, understandable. And what I want to mention in this video is that to get good quality, basically quality, like anything else, isn't free. Quality financial information isn't free. And actually, perfect quality <clears throat> is pretty much impossible. The reason why is because there's a cost constraint. So the more quality that you want, so if we made like a little uh, graph of this, the more quality you want, the more it's gonna cost you. And so to have that perfect, perfect quality, there's a cost constraint. It's gonna be super expensive. And it's why perfect quality is pretty much impossible. So to give you an example, if you remember when we discussed the timeliness characteristic, first off, what is, when information is timely, what does that mean? It means that information is provided in time for it to be relevant in order for users to make well-informed decisions. And we talked about how older information becomes less and less relevant. And I also mentioned in that uh, video that if you take a large company and let's say they have an annual period from January 1st to December 31st, usually they issue financial statements within three months of that year end. So March 31st. So the financial statements, the balance sheet, the income statement for this annual period here, it's usually issued some point within this three months here. Now, if they, if the company, let's assume this is a large company, so there's a lot of financial data, a lot of stuff to organize, hence why that three month period exists here because it takes time, it takes resources to organize all that data. Let's say that this company wanted perfect timeliness. Well, if they wanted perfect timeliness, then when would the financial statements be issued? They would probably be issued right here, January 1st. And actually, if it was perfect, perfect, the financial statements would be created in real time as time went on. And so right when December 31st would finish, then the financial statements would be ready for that entire year. However, if a company was to put that kind of uh, constraint on themselves, where they have to issue these year, this uh, total year financial statements on January 1st, that would be super expensive to do. They would have to allocate tons more resources into the accounting department, a lot more people. There may actually be more people than working in the accounting department than in the actual whole company, right? And so it's not worth it. It would be too expensive to do. Now in the future that may change. We may be able to hire cheap robots that can run around the company and collect all the financial data and then quickly make these financial statements in real time. But in this day and age, we don't have that. So <clears throat> it's pretty much impossible for a big company for these financial statements to be ready January 1st. So that perfect timeliness is impossible. It's too expensive, right? It's not worth it. So that's why companies kind of take a hit. They take a bit of a loss on this quality of timeliness and they extend this time here because they feel that within this time, the information is still going to be relevant. Okay, so that's an example of where you have to find the right balance of quality versus costs. 
when you are preparing this financial information. And the question to actually ask yourself is how much quality is enough, so that's the key there, how much quality is enough for users to make well-informed decisions, All right? How much quality is enough? If you try to maximize this quality too much, it's gonna to be too expensive for you. And if you try to minimize this cost here, then the quality is gonna to be too low. So you gotta find that right balance. How much quality is enough for users to make well-informed decisions? And what we're gonna cover in the next section is we're gonna go over underlying assumptions of accounting that point us towards the right direction or help us find that right balance of quality versus cost.